Gary Hill, George Yokova. Stage three, Gary Hill, George Hill. It's time and let the fire roll. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, it might sound better. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you believe it? It is 6 o'clock Wednesday morning. Let's all stand. Yeah. Yeah. Begin to worship the Lord this morning. Here we go. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. And again, after the time, what do we do? We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship the
mountain shake and crumble at your name the ocean roar and tumble at your name angels will bow the earth will rejoice your people cry Taking the mic. <laughs> hey, good morning, man. Have a seat. Wow. Good morning, man of God. Good morning, brother. How hey, are man. you? Good. Look at everybody. Look at everybody. Uh huh. Happy. What is today? Today's the 10th of April. Yeah. Already. I don't that know means today my daughter is 50 years old. <laughs> really? Yeah, I told her yesterday on the phone. I. I said, Sandy, I said, it's really hard to buy a birthday present for an old woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, and then so, I did say, I corrected myself, well, I said, it's hard to buy a birthday present for a beautiful old woman. Oh, see, yeah. yeah. That was a lot nice better. Nice move. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good move right there. Yeah. Hard uh, to imagine. So, it's really hard to imagine our daughter's 50. I mean, it's just like so the old you weren't So you weren't like 10. I, I was I mean, around there, 10, 12, <laughs> yeah, when everything started happening. Yeah. <laughs> well, happy birthday. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, she's an awesome, she's an awesome uh, woman of God. Probably the 
one of the greatest gifts you could have is when your kids grow up. Your daughter, I mean, she's just a beautiful woman of God, married to a great man of God in heaven. Chasing after and the Almighty. And in fact, her daughter, her oldest, says, um, I'll be up there on, in May for her graduation from the university. And I'm thinking, Woo! wow, yola bole, you know, this is like way cool. <laughs> yeah, I like uh, these kind of days. Yeah. Well, and spring is in the air. We're all sneezing. Yeah. Go out in the car and it's yeah. filled with a yellow dust. And yeah, it's a... Just a Super bl blossoming year, yep. has super allergy yep. here. Yeah, all the good things are here. It's yep. fantastic. Well, yeah. and that also means that Easter's right around the corner, doesn't it? It means Easter's coming. Yeah. Yes. Tell we, us about it. Well, we got uh, in, in the park at ten o'clock, and uh, we'd like to invite all of you. And I don't know if you've heard the yeah, that little commercial, that advertisement on the <laughs> KPRL. Yeah. Who's heard it? <laughs> who's heard that commercial? Yeah. Yeah, and that it's pretty cool, isn't it? It was really kind of fun, you know. The uh, lady went in there and. Uh, my, Goody and Mike wrote wrote the the deal, and they wanted me to <laughs> say it. And I went in there and did they write but, any words like upside down just no, to no, trip you up <laughs> as you're reading? No, it, right? but it was funny. I've done these things a long time ago. But I and they have the mic right there, and they put the paper there, and that she said, okay, uh, just just go ahead and read it. And I read. It, she said, and she looks at me. and She says, boy, you have a you have a radio voice. I said, I do. And I said, thanks. <laughs> and then she says, now we're going to record. Let's just do it. And normally I do it three or four times. I read it just once. And she says, we're done. That was, that was good. And I said, we're done? It's like you are born to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she goes, you're not nervous at this. And I said, no. It's, no, it's just no. jaw jacking. But on, yeah. on uh, Easter, it's going to Guys, we really want, uh, if you do something, when you go downtown, and if you have time, take right. the time to walk around that park and pray. See, we're not interested in just having a service. You know, it's North County. Christian is doing this, Second, Second Baptist, Baptist. Uh, and us, we're doing it. And we're, we want to reach our, our city. We, we're praying for at least 2,000 people there. Uh, we've got a 60-voice choir from all three churches. We've, and that, I mean, that's, it's just awesome. Celebration yeah, Kevin, Kevin's in the choir, I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah. it's going to be a joy. And I tell you what, anybody that was there last year, there's something special about being outside with everybody putting on your yeah. easter best well and we're going to talk about the impact of the resurrection this yes. morning i mean it's the magnificence of what god has done in us he rebirthed us i mean this is it's really holy really and, exciting uh, i'm I, I can hardly wait i've i've already been downtown a couple of times praying and and i just thought oh father just give us the city just give us the whole city mm. you know i'll just give us the whole central coast <laughs> you know would that be wonderful i mean to see something like a pentecost come up on the whole well, coast? He's, he's given us the ability. He's given us the tools. Yeah. He's given us himself. And uh, our yeah. job, just, just, by, just by being who you guys are, you, m many of you have been around here for a long time, and, yeah. and just being who you are out in that dark world changes lives. Yeah. You, you affect people in ways that you don't know. Yeah. yeah. Just, just living as men of God. That's right. Amen. That's right. Hey, uh, Mark. Come on up for a minute. He had an announcement. Uh, we got I mean, we've got several things there's going lot, on. Do we not? There's always <laughs> a lot going on. Yeah. If yeah. if you are not involved in something, then I think you're yeah. sleeping or, yeah. or dead. I don't and know. And you need hearing aids. Yeah. Good morning. Better to have a radio voice than a face for radio, right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, uh, how many have been to Thousand Hills Ranch for an M6? Anybody have that uh, meatloaf the other night? Yeah. That was pretty good and stuff. So this Friday and Saturday, we're having our, our annual camp out. We call it M24, Men for 24 Hours. So if you think about um, that guy in your life that, that wouldn't show up at church on Wednesday morning, but he might go to a ranch with you for some pretty good barbecue. Um, when, we, when we look at this sign here that says direction for the journey, the journey usually starts with an ev event or something where that person can draw the line in the sand. M24 is one of those. Um, it's surrounded by testimonies, um, encouragement from guys that have been, been on a journey for a while that have found victory in the Lord. And um, it's very non-threatening. In fact, uh, Jim was even saying they're going to have a mechanical bull for Friday afternoon. Oh, yeah. I, I <laughs> guess that means pray. <laughs> but uh, there... The, the, event, wall, the event is from, uh, from noon Friday to noon Saturday, 24 hours. Uh, you can camp out there in your RV. You can camp out there in a tent. You can come home at night and come back in the morning. Um, 
and how, how many have ever been to a men's retreat where they never asked you for money? It, the price has been paid, guys. Uh, we're going to hand you a nice t-shirt and a hat on the way in. Uh, you're going to have an incredible time. It'll be a blessing. Bring someone. Um, if you want to see me to sign up. That's this Friday. This Friday. And this Saturday. Yeah, if you want to see me this morning to sign up, come see me. Otherwise, just show up. We'll, yeah. we'll just handwrite your name tag. It'll all be good. But it will be a blessing. I hope you can join us. Amen. Amen. Mark, thank you. Amen. Yeah, that's all part of the, uh, the influencers. Um, yeah that we've started up here in uh, on the central coast and we've got a group of guys that meets on right. fridays and uh it's phenomenal so and then we um, have something saturday here also. right so now if if you can't do that uh then come to chow come to breakfast here uh here in the chapel 7 30 on saturday yeah. um we have a gentleman that's coming to us from a first christian in santa maria okay. big man uh, his name is Jefferson Ledgerwood. If that is, Karen saw saw his name. She goes, "Well, that is that's quite a handle." Yeah. I said, "Yes, that's something that I would say." And she says, "Well, I I learned it from you." Yeah. So, Jefferson Ledgerwood. This gentleman uh, got hit by a car doing 40 miles an hour. Um, that's what I I I do that on purpose. We do crash tests every year, and we hit our cadavers at 40. And the damage. Well, that, that sounds fun. Oh well, it's if for the advancement of science. Anyway, check this out. Um, he got hit, and he knew what was going on. And he, as he's flying through the air, he has this calm about him, and he says, "Wow, I get to meet my Lord today." Wow. And then he flew about a hundred feet, and he landed, and he got up, and he says. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I don't do the story any justice. But they the need way to that, come and hear the story. The way that he tells it and what God did as a result of that. Amen. Um, it, it, it blew me away when I heard his testimony. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing. I, I had a gentleman here uh, ask, how on earth are we getting these speakers that, yeah. that just pour out their lives to us? And I, I, has, I have no idea. The Lord puts the, are putting these men in, a, uh, in our path. Yeah. And uh, he's coming all the way from Santa Maria just to share. Amen. It, it's going to be an amazing thing. 7.30 here. 7.30 here. Also, Goody wanted me to uh, let you guys know that there's a, uh, that those that aren't going to M24, that there's also a work day out at Whisper Canyon that we're, that we're Is that putting that this together. Friday? This, this Friday, be here at 08, did you say? Okay, yeah, we have a pool to install. Right. That doesn't mean digging a hole. It just means, yeah, it's <laughs> an above getting ground. It ready. Yeah, it's above ground. getting it ready. Yeah. And then I also wanted to uh, say, uh -huh. did you see what the cat drug in this morning? Kurt, Kurt, Hardbrock. come on up here. Kurt, Kurt come on. Hardbrock come on up here, here. Kurt. Come yeah, come on up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If... <clears throat> If you guys don't know this great man of God, he, uh, he and his beautiful bride Betty retired to Idaho uh, here. Mike told me he's down here looking for business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my friend, uh, we just we want to bring you up here so that everybody on Facebook could see you. You were and he has some things to say here. You're 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 such a great man, and it's such a joy to see you. A breath of fresh air when I saw you walking through the door this morning. Yeah. That's for you. Come on up on it here. There's a uh, Gus and I were talking on the phone. Of course, I have to say something real quick. That uh, I go through scriptures and I'll I'll say Gus needs that, or I'll yeah. send a text to him and say I thought of you when I read that. It uh, the other day I was going through Second uh, Corinthians five, you know, <laughs> where it says we have re been reconciled, so that we have. Uh, a message of reconciliation so that we have a ministry of reconciliation. Amen. And usually we stop where it says, be ambassadors of God. Yeah. But then the verse 1 of chapter 6, don't receive the grace of God in vain. Yeah. Uh, they didn't have chapters and verses when they wrote this. <laughs> they did. And we forget that. Yeah. Uh, so claim the gospel, live the gospel, and then proclaim the gospel. Amen. Don't, don't receive it in an empty way. 
really live it. God bless us. Amen. Amen, man of God. <laughs> you are such a joke. How long Amen. do you get to stay, Kurt? How long do you get to stay? Just till Friday. Wes, Wes isn't here. Uh, so Wes and I and whoever wants to come are going to have breakfast at the Country Touch in Atascadero. And I'll be at the Cowgirl as per usual. Hey, Big Mike. Are you having two breakfasts today? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, it, it's First West Reading, right? West Reading? Is that who you're talking yeah, about? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what, because he's on his way back from Puerto Vallarta. Yeah, he's having he's, to he's suffer really down there. Time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so since he's not going to be here, we were texting back and forth. We're going to have breakfast together down there if you want to, because we'll be over at Dale and Bonnie Workman's. Uh, Thursday night, and then, uh, but t right afterwards, there's a few of us usually bug country girl. So, <laughs> cow, cow girl. Oh, it's, ca it's <laughs> cow girl. Okay. Right here in town. Right here. Okay, <laughs> roger that, roger that. God bless you, brother. Uh, God Good bless to see you. you. Thank you, man of God. Okay. Amen. All right, man of God. Blessing. Guys, around your table, you got the word of God right there. Open it up, and then you've got a question. And uh, we'll get back together in a few minutes.
Guys, we got about uh, two more minutes, all right? Then we'll get started. Time me there, Mikey. Guys, we got about one more minute. If you want to get a coffee or a donut, this would be a good time to do that. Then we're going to get started.
All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. If you want to get a cup of coffee, Drake's, make it happen. And then we're going to get going. Okay? All right. <laughs> Way cool. All right, Mike, the Garmin. <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> All right, guys. Get your coffee and that protein donut so we can get going here. Okay. Amen. Right, Randy? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. The question you had to discuss today is, what is righteousness? What is it, and what is it based on? What is faith, anyway? I mean, why are so many men of, in Christianity suffering? Why are so many men not understanding how to keep a marriage together or how to rejoice in the Lord? Why do so many men struggle, men of God, men who have said they believe, and yet always feel unworthy? continually feel unworthy. They struggle with themselves, their nature, if only, I don't know, or, or you'll say to them, hey, holy man of God, well, I'm trying. Oh, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense at all. So what is righteousness and what's it based on? And, and uh, I love these portions of scriptures. I mean, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through them again. And, and, and here, it, here it is about the law. When you think of the law that was given by Moses, and uh, the Lord gave it, and he didn't give it so that they would have life and righteousness. He gave it so they would despair. <laughs> that they can't climb up anything, they can't go down into an abyss anywhere, there's no religion on the planet that's going to release you from being unholy. There, you're in a hopeless condition, so what is the answer? What, how does this actually work? Christ is the end of the law. What does the law require? Once it's broken, once you broke it, once you broke it, it does not ask, okay, regroup yourself and go into good conduct. It only asks for one thing, your death. That's it. The whole human race, the law was given so that all of humanity would know they were born in sin. They cannot save themselves. There is no behavior modification with sin that's going to be an improvement by which a man is regrouped and has a new nature. And so Christ comes when a law is given, it, and it's broken immediately. I mean, before we're even, it's broken before we're, bo we're born in sin. And the first ag acknowledgments of anything a child does is to tell you, mom and dad, no. <laughs> right off the get-go. I'm always amazed about kids at two. Why, is, why? They call them the terrible twos. I'm not quite sure why, except they throw fits. And I think, what makes a kid throw a fit? What is it? It's the nature. And so the magnificence of these words is this, that God, Christ, and, and, here, and so I'm going to tell you, what is, what is righteousness anyway? Christ is the end of the law. What do you mean the end of the law? He means the fulfillment. When he says the end, Christ is the fulfillment. God made him who knew no sin, 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him who knew no sin, he didn't know sin. What do you mean? He never pretended. He didn't know sin. He had never sinned to become sin so that you and I would become righteousness. Christ is the end of the law, the fulfillment of the law. He's the fulfillment. Why? So that there may be righteousness for who? It's not just for everyone, for everyone who believes. What is righteousness? I've talked about condemnation being removed, your guilt's removed, your shame's removed, uh, your power over you. But uh, even a better word might be, you're declared innocent. <laughs> now and forever. <laughs> Doesn't that do something for you? <laughs> Think of this, that God Almighty, at the right time, becomes man to bring an end to this so that you will be declared innocent forever. 
You're declared innocent men of God forever. Why? Because of Christ. Who are you? I'm an innocent man. I'm living in a sinful body, but I'm an innocent man. And as an innocent man, I'm growing in this innocence. I'm growing in this righteousness by which I get the privilege of taking the sinful carcass, which I happen to inhabit, and turn it into the glory of God. That's why repentance is an act of worship. You cannot repent when you still feel like you're some lowlifer, brain-dead stupid idiot. You never make it right. If I only did this more, if I only prayed more, if I only did, if I only, there is no if only. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior? What is the importance of this resurrection? You look at, I mean, I, I'm, and look at, Ro, look at Romans 6, 4, okay? And I was sitting there thinking about that because uh, about Easter, and it says Christ was raised from the dead. Christ was raised from the dead. By the glory of the Father. Why? So that we too may live a new life. So that we too. Christ was raised from the dead. Why? So that I, Gus Best, can live a new life. What kind of a life? A new life. A rebirth life. That I might gain in the magnificence of being innocent. That I might understand as an innocent man now and forever. I am blameless before God forever. Why? Because of my Savior. But I'm also... I'm blameless. Do you understand? I'm blameless. I live, I inhabit a sinful body. This old man that you're seeing up here is not really who I am. I'm using this carcass for the glory of God and to bless you, to bless my wife. That's what I use it for. It's my tool. It's the only way I can express so that you know who Christ really is, so that you can understand by faith and to believe him that you are an innocent man because Christ died on that cross and rose again. This is the resurrection. It's a resurrection month. Why? He was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. What do you mean? God was glorified raising him from the dead. God was magnificently glorified. Why? So that I would live a new life. Does that do anything for you? That, it takes all shame away. It takes joy unspeakable. I can't even contain myself most of the time. I love this. I think anytime anyone says any good thing, I think, oh, you'll praise God. Look what the Holy Spirit's doing in me. Christ is the end of the law, the fulfillment of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone. And it's a, to, for, for everyone who believes. So the question is, if you don't feel righteous, if you don't feel innocent, if you don't feel the magnificence of innocence means, why is it, therefore there is now no condemnation of those who are in Christ Jesus? Because they're innocent. How in the world can I have condemnation when I'm innocent? <laughs> who made me innocent? Christ. Who gave me the gift of faith? Christ. Who gave me grace? Christ. Now who am I? I'm an innocent, blameless man. I was given a brand new nature. He didn't come in and say, Gus, you're a little bit sick, and I'm going to try to improve you. I'm going to give you some stuff here. I've got an antibiotic for you. No, he said, you need a complete regroup. You, can, uh, you need to be rebirthed, son. <clears throat> when I rebirth you, you will never be the same. And by the way, everyone will notice you've been rebirthed. There's a confession here going to come in, and I want you to see how he walks us down there. Moses describes it in this way. The righteousness that is by the law. The righteous by the law is you're working your tail off all the time, trying to go up or down, whatever you're doing. You're always trying to figure out a way to get, improve yourself because there's a strife within you. You hear these words, but there's a strife. I never get my act together. How many times did I say I'm not doing that again? Oh, I'm just, I don't know what to do with this lust problem. I don't know what to do with my anger problem. I don't know what to do with this, these feelings of stress. I'm just living in stress all the time. Anxiety and worry is just my friend. I can't get rid of it. I'm, I go to counseling. I go to counseling. I work, 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 and I can't improve it. That's because you're trying to find your innocence in the wrong way, in the wrong place. So what is it? What is this righteousness? What is this innocence? The man who does these things will live by them. But the, that's in the law. But the righteousness that is by faith, the righteousness by faith, what, this is the idea. I don't have anything to do. I'm already righteous. How do I know that? Well, he walks us down. 
Hey, I don't go about, I, it, I don't say in my heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or That's, that's that working religion. That's the whole idea of religion and, and going into the depth. But in verse 8, but what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth. It's in your heart. The word. That is what word? The word of faith. What do you mean? I'm proclaiming that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. If you will confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And if you will believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you are justified. What do you mean? You have now been declared innocent. <laughs> you have been rebirthed. There is no shame anymore. And yet how many of us right here in the room have done that and you feel disgusted with yourself? <laughs> what does faith say? Don't feel disgusted. Why do, do you like that? Is it working for you? Does it help you along your journey? No. Believe what God has said. The joy of the Lord is at hand. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth you confess. Something about your mouth. So today, with your mouth, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Amen? Amen? Do, you, do you confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior? Amen? Amen? Amen. Well, say it out loud. I mean, just say it. Watch what will happen to you. I remember, it's like, I don't know why men of God are just struggling with themselves. It doesn't make any sense. I had one man of God come in here. This was a year ago. And I just said, rejoice in the Lord. I said, rejoice in the Lord. It says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Just praise the Lord. No. That's what he said to me. Right after a band of brothers. No. I said, praise the Lord. No. That's not my nature. Well, I said, no, it's not your sinful nature, but it sure is the nature of God. Praise the Lord. No, I won't do it. I said, you're not walking out of this chapel until you praise the Lord. <laughs> and I'm telling you, get your act together. You tell me right now, praise the Lord. And the lowlifer was a former Marine. That really irritated me. <laughs> so I knew I could command him, though, you know. You praise the Lord. And he had this sorry look on his face. And I said, look, joy is at hand. Praise the Lord. Now you say it right now. <laughs> and this is what he did. He all of a sudden he goes, praise the Lord. <laughs> and he got a big grin on his face. And I said, see what I mean? And as soon as I said that, he went frowning again, you know. But the end result of that was that man got a changed nature. He had got himself down in such a hole, he forgot to live by faith. Everything that is not of faith is sin. And sin will take you down to a place you never wanted to go and let you have feelings that you never wanted to have. I am telling you there is no one like the Lord. Righteousness. Christ is the end of the condemnation. He is the end of despair. He is the end of all sorrow. He is the end of stress and worry and anxiety. He is the end of the lust of my life. When I believe what he had to say, that I confessed with my mouth Jesus Christ is Lord. I have confessed with my mouth Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm not ashamed of that. I believed in my heart that he was raised by the glory of the Father so that I, Gus Best, can walk in a new life, brand new life, I was, I'd never been there before. I've been there a lot of years now. A friend of mine, Dixon Sumter, is here this morning. Dixon and I have been friends for 40 years. We were young at one time. Remember that? <laughs> he knew me when I didn't wear glasses or hearing aids. And we've been in five churches together. We've mentored men from all over the country. We started three churches together. His wife was our worship lady every time. Remember that? We started in Simi Valley in a single car garage. Remember we were cleaning out the oil on the floor? Yeah. Rolled her piano in there and she played and 16, we lifted up the door of that single car garage and 16 people showed up. We thought, wow! Next thing we know we had 75 people in the driveway. And they're all with umbrellas sitting in their chairs because it was so hot. And one guy, remember that? And then somebody says, do you think we should have a building? I thought, I never thought of that. Maybe we should. I don't know. And I look back at those days, you know, we, we were on a journey together. And I look and I said, guys, there's no one. And the release, this is Easter. This is Easter month. Let's live in the resurrection. The resurrection has already been given. The magnificence. When you invite people out to that park, we're not trying to do a religious service. We want them to come and experience what most people don't experience. 
being and knowing that they're now declared innocent because of the power of Jesus Christ. We are not talking about a denomination. We're not talking about a religion. We are talking about the magnificence of Christ himself. There is no one like the Lord. And once you have believed that, once he has given you that faith and you have received his grace, from now and evermore, you are innocent. Now and evermore, God says in Ephesians 1, he says, it gives me great pleasure to present you before me blameless now and forever. Well, God, you're blameless. What's that going to do for you? <laughs> huh? You've been given a new nature. You can love rightly. You don't have to choose anger. You don't have to go with anxiety. You don't have to be sitting there being remorse, 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 remorse. If there's something you need to repent over, it's an act of worship. You know, someone says, you just acted like a jackass. You know I did, didn't I? Thank you for saying that. That was way cool. Thank you, because that's not who I am. See, the magnificence of Christ. This is the resurrection month. And we must have, we need desperately, men of God, to live who they are. If God declares you righteous, what are you? Right. You're righteous. You are innocent. You are blameless. You, are, you inhabit a sinful body that he declares will not inherit my kingdom. I will not let that sinful body come into my kingdom. You will not, this body will not know righteousness, will not know peace, and will not know the joy of my Savior. But you will. So now take and present this body you inhabit as an offering unto the Lord in this resurrected month. Let's go shake the earth one more time for the glory of God and the souls of men. Let's make this Easter month the most magnificent month that the Central Coast has ever seen or experienced. Let's, let's have the joy of the Lord as our strength. Let's rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. Let's delight ourselves in the Lord that he will grant to you the desires of your heart for your family, the souls of men and women, for the community, for your pastors, for your churches. You, you men of God here come from 36 different churches. Is that not a blessing? So go to those churches and fan the flame of men and women of God. Gary, come on up and lead us in a song, and let's sing with that freedom. Amen?